Hey bookmarks and bookworms, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to take you through all of the books that I bought over the summer. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what they're about and also why I bought them. First up is Dissolution and I picked this up because I always like to pick up a crime, mystery, historical fiction novel around this time of year and this fits that brief. This is about Henry VIII's decision to dissolve the monasteries around Britain. However, in one monastery, things have escalated and a commissioner has been killed. And so a lawyer is sent to investigate and we follow that lawyer. This is a bit of a shot in the dark for me in terms of like, this is a new to me author. I don't know how well he's going to write. And so I am taking a bit of a punt on the plot alone for this. But at least with good knowledge of the subject matter, I shouldn't get lost. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Next up, I bought Perfect Golden Circle by Benjamin Myers. Myers is one of my all-time favourite authors. Of course I had to pick this up. He just knocks it out of the park every time, and I have no doubt that he's going to do it again with this novel. He beautifully evokes the countryside of Northern England, as well as often includes the theme of fighting power. And in this book specifically, he is telling the story of two boys and the crop circles they create over the course of one summer. Next up I picked up Brandon Sanderson's The Final Empire because I feel like I have a Brandon Sanderson sized hole in my reading right now. I want to see what all the hype around this author is for myself. He seemingly forever changed the fantasy genre when he dropped onto the scene and so I'm very much here for his world building and a set of characters that I can deeply invest in and spend time with. Next up is To the River by Olivia Lang. I have tried Olivia Lang's non-fiction before and honestly it is beguiling. It is so great. It's some of the only non-fiction that actually works for me. And this one, the premise of this sounds no different. It sounds amazing. So this is the story of the River Ouse or Ouse in Sussex. I have no idea how you pronounce the name of it. But this is the river in England in which Virginia Woolf died. Yes, you heard me right, Virginia Woolf drowned in this river in 1941. In this book, the author is actually walking the length of the river whilst delivering a passionate investigation into how history resides within the landscape itself, which I think sounds fascinating. I absolutely love being around water. And so the idea that she spent however many weeks and months writing this novel whilst walking down this river just absolutely fascinates me and I can't wait to hear how she got on with it. But this is a book actually about many writers, not just Virginia Woolf, as Iris Murdoch, Shakespeare and also Kenneth Graham, the author of The Wind in the Willows, are all linked to this river. Up next we have American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I bought this because I really enjoyed another Neil Gaiman book that I read within the last couple of years, which was The Ocean at the End of the Lane. This one I think is darker and more adult in its content. This is about a couple who embark on a road trip across the US whilst a storm is brewing. And apparently this book takes a long hard look at the soul of America. So that sounds pretty interesting. Next up we have Margaret Atwood because I am forever buying Margaret Atwood books when I see them go to 99p or on sale anywhere. So this is Elias Grace and I'm hoping that this becomes one of my all-time favourite Margaret Atwood books alongside The Blind Assassin because it's giving me similar vibes. It's historical fiction, it has a strong mystery element, it has a female protagonist, all similar hallmarks to The Blind Assassin which is currently my favourite Margaret Atwood of all time. I'm sure most people are aware of what the plot to this is because it's also been adapted for screen. But we essentially meet our protagonist serving a life sentence for a murder that she doesn't remember committing. And so a psychologist is brought in to try and basically acquit her of that murder by trying to help her access her memories. I want this to be addictive. I want to not be able to put this down. Will this be a five star read for me? I can only hope so. I also bought Margaret Atwood's new short story collection which is called Old Babes in the Wood. Um, the only reason I bought this was because it was Margaret Atwood and it was on sale and I just collect her work when I see it go on sale. That's pretty much the only reason why I have this. I'm not usually a short story fan but it's Margaret Atwood and so I just get it. Then I bought Paul which is probably the oddest buy on this list because I've actually already read this book but it is an amazing book. I read it several years ago and it stays in my mind. It was five stars and I reckon now it would go on to my all-time favourites list. I want to be able to go back to this novel time and time again and so I wanted a copy of my own. 
The thing that struck me most about reading this the first time round was just how strongly I resonated with the female protagonist, but also how wonderfully the spirit of the French countryside is evoked by the author. She clearly has spent a lot of time there, as I have done, and so this is one of the best descriptions of place that I've possibly ever read in fiction. Next up I bought Antarctica by Claire Keegan, which is her debut collection of short stories. I have enjoyed all of Claire Keegan's novellas. I don't think I've picked up any of her short story collections yet, just because I'm not generally a short story person, but I'm happy to accumulate anything she's written really. She sticks to what she knows and she writes short form stories, usually island, and I've heard that most of the stories in this collection are dark, which also generally is the mood that I tend to go for when I'm reading. Next I bought Freshwater for Flowers and this was for a Women in Translation video, but I'm so glad that I actually have a copy of my own now to refer back to and reread time and time again as I get older and experience more grief and I feel like this would be a really good book to have around during those times because some of the sentiments and the way that she can perfectly capture the feeling of grief um, and some really beautiful lines about you know loved ones who we've lost and and puts that into words because sometimes those really difficult emotions are hard to actually put into words and she does it it brought me to tears at times it was beautifully written and this is a book for the heart and soul so i'm glad i have a copy of it next up i bought hungry ghosts and i'm interested in reading this purely because my friend jill over on goodreads labelled this as her first six star read of 2023. That's enough alone, Jill's recommendation, to buy a book and read it. But it is also inspired by traditional storytelling, which is often a style of narration that I enjoy best. Plus, it's a storyline that I think I will enjoy. It's slow, it's lyrical, it's a mystery novel as a wealthy landowner in 1940s Trinidad goes missing. So this is ticking all the right boxes for me. Getting closer to the end now, I have Jade City. I want to read this mainly because it's been spoken so highly of on booktube in the fantasy land side of booktube, but also because the premise sounds right up my street. This sounds like a godfather-esque saga of intergenerational blood feuds by the sounds of it, around a precious resource that is Jade. So I know nothing other than that, and that it's adult political fantasy, and that it's been praised for its prose which is something that I appreciate, especially with the fantasy genre, because I generally stick to literary fiction, and so when I do broach over into other genres, like fantasy, historical, uh, crime, thriller, I do like there to be a little bit of literary, just because that's what I'm used to. So next I bought Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I am collecting Daphne du Maurier's backlist at a phenomenal rate. Um, I've purchased recently Rebecca the, the King's General, The House on the Strand, The Scapegoat, and The Glass Blowers, because they go on sale so frequently. But I have actually only read three of her books. Frenchman's Creek, I gave five stars. Um, My Cousin Rebecca, I gave four stars. And then Jamaica Inn, I gave three stars. So I am wondering how I will fare with the other five that I've bought. So if you have any suggestions down in the comments for me of where you think I should go next with Daphne du Maurier's work, then please do leave me your suggestions on those five that I've got to work my way through. Lastly, I picked up The Likeness. Now this is for a specific reading vlog that I'm making this month. It's technically the second in a series, it's the second in the Tanner French Dublin Murder Squad series. I have read the first one, but this is actually a standalone, you don't have to have read the first one in order to read The Likeness. So in this, Detective Cassie Maddox finds her doppelganger has been murdered. So you do have to suspend some disbelief with this book because doppelgangers don't exist, right? And you certainly can't insert yourself into the dead doppelganger's life and pretend to all of her friends and family that you are her, right? There's things about us all that make us all different, even if we look slightly similar to somebody else, not to the point where we are identical twins. But a bigger problem than that is that this woman has, this dead woman has Cassie Maddox's old undercover name as her ID card. And so the dead doppelganger has been pretending to be Cassie Maddox's old undercover persona. And so by inserting Cassie Maddox back into her old life, they're hoping to find out who murdered this woman. 
and also at the same time find out why this woman was using Cassie Maddox's old alias and who therefore she really is. So that brings me to the end of what I've bought so far. Um, on my to buy list at the very very top are things like the Wind Up Bird Chronicle, which I've been recommended so many times by you guys down in the comments, so thank you very much. I will be buying that pretty soon. Um, I'm also looking at buying Middle March by George Eliot and Mansfield Park by Jane Austen because I found some beautiful editions of those two books that I would really like to have. And I also may purchase Alison Weir's uh, The Sixth Wife, which focuses on the life of Catherine Parr, just because I'm also in the mood for historical and Tudor and Catherine Parr also uh, lived and died relatively close to where I live, well, when I'm in England, and so that would also be interesting, I think. So, as ever, let me know in the comments down below what books you have picked up recently, what's on the top of your to buy list. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure to subscribe and stick around if you have not subscribed to this channel already, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Thanks for watching, guys.